It is entirely common and typical on any given fast Sunday to hear an entire litany of expressions that begin, I know, I know, I know. But we need to make more room for people to stay, stand up and say, I believe, I hope, or I trust. I'm Terrell Givens, co-author of The Christ Who Heals. I think we have a long tradition in our culture of criminalizing doubt. I think that it still continues in some quarters, although it seems to me that we've seen a sea change brought about largely through the leadership who have spoken very powerfully and feelingly about the inevitability of these moments of faith crisis and loss of certainty in our lives. The important thing that I think we see in terms of, of Christ and, and discipleship is we never see him interacting with people who are certain about anything. He is always in a teaching relationship or a mentoring relationship or a healing relationship. And so I think the picture that we get of Christ in the New Testament is that he is always invested in the process of turning people into disciples. And so we should feel more comfortable with recognizing our own place in a continuum uh, in which we are striving to become those disciples, but never feel complacent with, with the place where we are. I think as I've gone through my own experiences of, uh, of the deconstruction of certain verities that I had once taken for granted. It has challenged me to consider, I think in a more methodical and systematic way, what are the bases of my own faith. And I think that that's a useful exercise for anybody to go through, to become more self-aware. Even for those of us who are certain of the underlying foundational tenets of our faith, I think in virtually every life there are gray areas, areas of uncertainty which we should, I think, feel more comfortable expressing as a way of indicating that, yes, even though I know this, I'm convicted of this particular truth, but I'm still struggling, I'm still wrestling with these other areas of our faith tradition. I, I think that a move in that direction would, would eliminate the kind of silent trauma and sense of alienation that I think vast multitudes in our faith tradition experience as they sit quietly in the pews listening to these, these professions of certitude and knowledge and feeling that, that they're not a part of that tradition because they can't engage in that same kind of language, when the reality is that they are probably in the majority in many cases. It is incumbent upon us to shape the culture that characterizes Mormonism. And I have all kinds of family members and relatives at all different stages of faith and in all different kinds of relationship to the faith tradition. And so I'm personally invested in trying to, to create a culture that is welcoming, that is loving, that is embracing, and that recognizes uh, the beauty of a body of Christ in which everybody has a place in the choir.